Everybody loves a transformation. Everybody loves a fixer-upper. Everybody likes to see a before and after. This is the Bircham House. <gasps> I love reveal shows, like just period. People relate to it because everyone has a home or wants a home. It's a safe thing to watch in a doctor's office or curled up on your couch with a glass of wine or with any member of your family. This is the AV Club's Why We Love, an examination into the reasons we're drawn to our pop culture obsessions. This time around, we're breaking down walls and taking an open concept look at why we love home renovation shows. Is it voyeurism, wish fulfillment, or a genuine interest in subway tiles and property brothers? This is why we love home renovation shows. You could be having a bad day and if you watch an HGTV show and you see a kitchen get remodeled in 30 minutes, there's a certain satisfaction as a viewer that you get from that. It is fun to see a transformation. I think when you watch a house transform or a room transform, I think it's a very satisfying feeling. I particularly love the type of home renovation show where you can also learn something. So you can take a tangible lesson and apply it to your own life, your own house. I think that's the best kind for me. But sometimes it's also just fun to turn something on and, and watch them just demo the crap out of a house and, and break down some walls. Hi, I'm Bob Vila. Welcome to this old house. We've got a lot to talk about today. We haven't been here in a week, so we'll be getting a progress report from the homeowners. I loved watching this whole house and just for me it was, uh, the design side was interesting, but I was obsessed with building and the construction aspect of it. I'm a magician, so when I was younger I used to build all of my own props, my own illusions, and I do the woodwork and the metalwork and um, I was just obsessed with that and also finding out ways to do it right. Because I remember even in houses that, that we lived in and, and my dad had built some of our houses in the barn and things like that, we helped him. Um, opening up walls and seeing how it works. Everybody loves a transformation. Everybody loves a fixer-upper. Everybody likes to see a before and after. And at the end of the day, we all live in houses, condos, mobile homes, maybe tents, RVs, and we're, we're proud of where we live. And, and I think it's important to have pride of ownership. And I think people, they dream of remodeling their houses. They dream of those kitchens. They dream of those bathrooms. And I think it's really motivating and inspiring for people. I didn't watch any home shows. Like I watched Trading Spaces, of course, because it was so dramatic and ridiculous. Like, who is going to do this? The big question is, what do you think about the fireplace? You guys are going to be fixing that in a little bit. So, um... Yeah, well, I just see a lot of firewood. I think a lot of us kind of learned the home space through Trading Spaces back in the day. It was really that show that made you realize that you could have fun designing a house, you could fall in love with the characters on the show, and it was just kind of this like captivating TV viewing. I think on the other end of that, the original design star got me sucked in because I'm a, I am love competition shows, and that was just so exciting and well done, and everyone fell in love with David Bromstad, and that was one of those things that made me realize just how much this world is something that appeals to me. Oh, I love the staging. They did a perfect job of mixing like some contemporary elements to kind of a traditional house. I love reveal shows, like just period. I think also is probably when I really think about it, how I got into all of it was I just love, you know, like everything from the Pride Brothers to The Biggest Loser to any show where there's like a new ending and you're like, oh my God, like I just love that. Decision made. Yes. Yes. And are you going to love it? Or are you going to list it? We're going to love it. Yes. I know that one of the things that I get a lot about why they like the show is, first of all, it's escapism. And that was long before where we are right now with this um, pandemic. It's just a nice way to escape, you know, Hillary Clinton, when she was Secretary of State, loved our show because she loved the fact there was a dynamic, there was a competition, there was a little bit of anger, but there was a resolution and all it took was 60 minutes and everybody was smiling at the end. So it's um, that's a big part of it, I think. I think like we obviously love them because they're aspirational, right? Like we love a good transformation narrative. And I think like even when you said we love it renovation shows, I was like, maybe you're not even talking about home renovations. Maybe you're talking about body renovations, right? Like the narrative of transformation is something that like we, I believe, like I, like people desire. And 
I think with homes, we especially desire them because <laughs> like we are increasingly removed from the skills and the crafts that it takes to like home improve and even to the home maintain. We went from shows that were either a little craftier or a little smaller spaces. And then we realized people love a makeover and a transformation. So let's go a little bit larger. Then we ended up spoiling them with Fixer Upper, which was like this entire home from top to bottom. And we realized that our viewers are kind of watching us to see what they want to see. And so we're constantly testing the waters. Do they want inexpensive homes in exotic locations? Check. Do they want to see what it's like to live in small town America? Check. Are they also intrigued by like what happens when Americans move abroad? Check. Like it's been fun just seeing how the audience wants to take this real estate and design ride kind of right along with us. And so the audience has just grown in size and stature. And I think that it's our job to keep feeding them what they do fall in love with in this world. Holy cow. <laughs> Welcome home, wow. guys. I was very into the Fixer Upper uh, show for a long time. And there was about two weeks of my life where I binged a whole lot of it, like obsessively binged Fixer Upper. And I found it so fascinating. Uh, and then I fell off, but I still go to Target and look at all the Magnolia Home stuff. Um, but that was the one, probably like the high point for me was Fixer Upper. I feel like everybody now is a bit of a junior designer in a really great way. They're taking more ownership of their spaces. So even if a family or a couple or a single person saves up and is able to hire a designer, they still want their say in the design because they've seen so many beautiful spaces. And I, without like patting us on the back, I think HGTV has been part of that inspiration process. We're like Pinterest before there was Pinterest, basically. Mm -hmm. This is great. When we left Ventura, I was thinking, you need to pull over right now and let me out because one, I'm going to fire you. And two, I'm going to walk back to Ventura where I want to be. But once we got here, I smelled the ocean, saw the seagulls. I see why he brought me here. I remember I bought my first house, I was around 21 years old, and I used to watch House Hunters all the time. And that's actually when I got introduced to HGTV was in 2004. House Hunters was it because we're all voyeurs when it comes down to it. And we all want to see how other people live. And we all want to see where people are moving. And to me, like going, there's nothing more satisfying than going to an open house. I just love it. And so that show was unlimited open houses. You just got to see how people lived. Maybe for me, the home buying shows become more sort of like foils for a kind of like sarcastic uh, critique, right? Like, the, I'm gonna roll my eyes when I'm watching that couple and they're gonna buy, like, of course they buy the worst house or some, you know, there's always some stupid thing that they're doing and they're always from the suburbs of Dallas. Move on to full bedroom. Currently it's being utilized as a massage room. Oh, wow. Good, I could um, really use a massage right now. I've seen a few episodes of House Hunters where there's a massage room or like a meditation room or Reiki. It'd be really fun if you walked in and there was just an operating table. <laughs> <laughs> what people like so much about House Hunters is it's like, also, there's so many like relationship dynamics that you can either recognize in yourself. Like it's always clear, like you can tell you meet a couple and like it doesn't matter what he thinks. Like it is definitely <laughs> whatever she decides is what they're picking. And you know what I mean? So it's like you can kind of see these relational re relationship dynamics too that resonate. And I don't know, I, I think that's part of House Hunters that people love. There's people who are like our peers who just, you know, watch it because it's also just so consistent and there's so many episodes that you know exactly what you're going to get. That you can watch the show, make fun of the people, like the house, judge the prices and move on with your life. The absurdity of House Hunters International that these people live in like Montana or in Colorado where you have wide open spaces, blue skies and all the room you want in your house and you want to move to a closet in Hamburg for three times the price so you could drink the coffee on the corner. Patong, I've been the hub of the city. I like to go to discos and parties and bars and, you know, have that nightlife again. Yeah, you're a bit too old. You're not in your 20s anymore. <laughs> There's very few networks, if any, that don't offend someone in some sort of way somehow. HGTV literally is the only network, I mean Food Network as well, they're the only networks, the group of networks that don't offend people. They just make people go like this, ooh, I wanna cook, and ooh, I wanna redesign my house, and ooh, let's go shopping for, for other things. And it's really wonderful to be a part of that moment. It's a safe thing to watch in a doctor's office or curled up on your couch with a glass of wine or with any member of your family. Like, I do think that we are that universal 
soft spot where kind of the world kind of comes together in terms of it being non-controversial, but hopefully entertaining and, and inspiring at the same time. I think it represents a safe place. It's a fun place. It's completely aspirational, as you say. And, um, and it's on, it's like the most beautiful wallpaper. You know, it's on in doctor's offices and dentist offices and hospital waiting rooms and manicure salons. Everywhere you go, HGTV is playing. It's quite extraordinary. I think there is a calming idea of the show. There is an affability about these shows that clear your mind. They don't fill your mind with any real ideas. Even Chopped can fill your mind with too many ideas. Oh, wow. wow. People relate to it because everyone has a home or wants a home, you know, and to watch HGTV is like, they're like, this is everything for me. Like, this is exactly what I wanted. I love house hunting through you guys. And now I'm actually being able to do it in person. There's just so much good with it. And, you know, for people to be able to keep HGTV on all day long with their kids and knowing that they're not going to be like, oh, I need to turn this off. You know, it's a such a family network, but it's also so aspirational for, for people because now we're showing bigger designs and bigger fabulousness. And now we're showing things of like, ooh, now it's that aspirational moment that I was looking for back in my 20s. But now HGTV has turned into that aspirational uh, network, which I think is really amazing. Open your eyes.